Um, Bronwyn, the history is pretty clear, right? Governments, generally speaking, well, well, they have for 100 years. They don't win by-elections, all right? So there's an interesting fight here about who ends up being the Conservative candidate. But, I mean, you know, it's not about expectation setting. It's history. It's just absolutely history. Yes, it is, but um, it, you've got to say there is a, a decent chance. Um, Albo is trying to set the, uh, the scene uh, if, the, if uh, the opposition lose the seat by saying that Mr Kelly's personal vote was 3%. The seat is on a percentage of 1%. Now, the, the fight is on at the moment. You've heard the people who are likely to be candidates uh, for the Liberal or National Party both say we want to go away and think about it for two days. That is highly unusual. What they're really saying is they hope the parties will work out a deal where one of them will run. Now, there's something else you have to consider in a three-cornered contest if that happened. The Prime Minister has said there will be a Liberal candidate um, and the Nationals are saying that they really expect Mr Bellalara to, to run. Um, interesting when you have a three-cornered contest, uh, Liberal preferences always flow to the National Party almost 90%. They're very, very strong flow of preferences. The, true, the same is not true of National Party preferences to the Liberal Party. So if there was to be a three-cornered contest, um, if the National Party uh, comes second to the Liberal Party, then the Liberal Party's chances are diminished because of that historical train. Mm. But whether or not um, uh, this seat can be won back, uh, Mr Kelly was very lucky to win it back uh, because Mr Turnbull was the, the Prime Minister and that's why he got it back, I reckon. Um, so it's going to be very interesting to watch. Yeah, it was formerly it was Peter Hendy and then, you know, he had the... You know, the Peter the, Hendy the, was the, a once-er. Yeah, correct, the wet fish sort of approach. And the, Anyway, we are where we are now. Um, but, Nicholas, uh, look, obviously you'll defend it's amazing, it's awesome, but what exactly is the genius behind... Um, the spin elbow put on it that straight away, right, as unsubtle as you could possibly be, hey, remember that time when that happened in January, as if it's the only thing that has ever mattered in the history of ever, when, by the way, all of that area is currently just as affected by coronavirus as it was about bushfires. Look, Paul, I mean, Albo has got a larrikin streak in him. Oh. Uh, he was, you know... Uh, <laughs> Using a bit of humour there to make That's a point. I mean, I, I don't think uh, people in that part of the world have forgotten what happened to the Prime Minister when he visited Cabago. Like, they, they didn't shake his hand. And, and the truth is, even today, there are still people living in tents and caravans in that part of the world as a result of the bushfires. So, right. so would that be a federal failing or a state or local government, government failing? Just checking. Well... Well, we, uh, I think most... No, 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 the living in tents Prime bit. Minister no, no, the living in tents Australia. bit. He abandoned his post during a time of national need. He went on holiday to Hawaii. We all remember that. You are outrageous, and, 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 Nicholas. And, and, Honestly. And, so, and that, that was a particularly affected part of Australia. So Nicholas, it's for, going to be an issue is it eight climate. weeks? Is it eight weeks, right? Well, it feels like I, I'm, I'm ready to go, mate. If you want to go, let's go. But I'm saying I think he's done the wrong thing trying to go there at the moment. Anyway, Stephen, is now the time, is today the day to go and play the lowest card you can in the deck? Well, I think you're being a bit thin-skinned. I think Scott Morrison is more than capable... Why am I being thin-skinned? Uh, with... yeah, no, mate, I think you're just being a tad sensitive on behalf of the Prime Minister. Oh, he's okay. a you're doing boy. the Campbell he, Newman. He's, uh, he, he doesn't mind throwing out a few hand grenades. You know, ask Daniel Andrews at the moment on schooling issues. You know, big consensus <laughs> time we're having. The guy's trying to blackmail private issue. schools in Victoria into going back to, going back when they don't want to. He's uh, defying the, the consensus which he stated, which is the state premiers decide the schooling systems and he's trying to interfere directly. So let's, let's not say the Prime Minister is not a big boy in this game. Uh, and Albo uh, is through a bit of a barb but the Prime Minister's subtly throwing plenty of barbs in Daniel Andrews' direction at the moment. What? It was, it that was is, really... that is the, that's, that's one of the greatest um, whisked eggs you've ever come up with. Like, bullshit on bullshit <laughs> there, mate. Like, Gee, that seriously. Was poetry. That was beautiful. Like, what, we, just, we got Daniel <laughs> Andrews <laughs> in it. It's about this. <laughs> yeah, it's, you know. Let's go back to Albo. They're yeah. going to play it that was, to upcoming very, politicians in the years to come to show them how to do it. Oh, <laughs> garbage. Anyway, Bronwyn, uh, yeah. 
It was very university <coughs> style politics, and he's got to realise that he's the leader of the opposition these days, and he's got to have things of substance to say, and that certainly wasn't anything of substance. It was just plain nasty. 